it's time to cover modules in Ruby. Now, as you write more and more code in your programs, you're going to notice that some of the code you probably duplicate and that you probably want to get rid of these duplications because let's say you make a change to one part of that code later, but then you have to make it twice. This can get very cumbersome as you write more and more code. Some programs have as much code as a million lines of code. So you want things to be compact and only written once. That way when you change it, that change is facilitated throughout the whole program the way that you want it. There's a way to do this easily in Ruby and that is with modules. Modules allow you to abstract code to one place and then allow other classes to reuse it. Let me show you guys an example. To create a module, we simply use the keyword, keyword module. We give it a name. In this case, we're going to give it a name called geometry. And then we have the end keyword to end the definition of the module. In a module, you can give it methods just as a class. You can not substantiate or create a module, so we're not going to define an initialize method like a class. We're just going to write a method that we feel that we're going to have to use a lot in our shapes. For instance, if we have a circle and a sphere, we may need a diameter method. And a diameter takes the radius and multiplies it by two. So we're going to make a diameter. And that's going to take in a radius. I'm going to put end to close that definition. And then I'm going to do radius times two. Pretty simple definition. We could also do a circumference method but that would be different for different shapes, so we won't define that. We'll just work with diameter right here because we know multiple shapes have the same definition. Now we're gonna define a class here, and a class we can actually create an instance of, and we're gonna make a circle here, and now we're gonna define our initialize method. Forgot <laughs> def, initialize, close that definition, and it's going to take a radius, we're just going to call it rad, and then we're going to sign at radius equal to rad. Now that we've done that, what we can do is that we need to tell this circle class about our geometry module. And the way we do that is within this class, we simply say include, the keyword include, and then the name of the module, so geometry. So now we've inherited this diameter method, this Yes, this method. Now we can use it and I'll show you guys the simple way of using it. The first thing we can do is we can simply create a new circle and I'll call it C circle.new and we'll give it a radius. And then I'll do puts C dot diameter. And I, in this case, I have to give it the same radius three. And when I do that and print it out, I get six. So I was able to use this diameter method inside my class. The power of this is I can write other classes like sphere and that definition put include geometry and now both these classes are looking at my diameter definition and if I decide to change it I by simply let's say squaring it or dividing it then both these classes will have it or let's say I figure out something else they both share I can simply add another method below. So now my sphere has that method. And what I could do here is I could actually get rid of this initialize method. I could then create a sphere here, sphere.new, and then put s.diameter4. And when I get, and now I get an error saying that I have the wrong number of arguments and that I have, that I deleted my operator here. And now, once I correct those things, I'm sorry, I deleted my operator above, and I get rid of my parameters from my initializer because I got rid of my initialize method, I then get eight and six because I gave it four and three. And now you can see here, I have two different classes and I used that method. Pretty cool that now I don't have to, I have, code we used in two different classes and I could add on more functionality that 
belongs to both the sphere and the circle because they inherit them. Now I'm going to end this video with showing you probably the best choice of using modules in Ruby and using a module that Ruby has built in for you, and that is the comparable module. If you notice, there is a way to compare certain objects. There's a way to compare numbers and strings and booleans with the greater than operators. Well, we, don't, we haven't really looked at a way to define class methods. One thing we could do is we could create a circle class. We could give it an attribute accessor of radius. We could give it an initialize method. And I could say, you know, r at radius equals r. And then I could simply make a method that's a def equals method that takes an other that sets, you know, self or at radius equal equal to other dot radius. Then I could create two circles, c1 equals circle dot new for, and then make a c2 variable. And let me make this with a different radius. And I could simply put, you know, C1 equal equal to C2. And when I print that out, it gave me an uninitialized constant circle. And that's because I made this class instead of a definition. And when I set them equal to each other and print this out, I get false. Now let's say I use another operator like does not equal here. I get true. Now let's say I do a greater than or less than equal operator here. I get an error undefined method greater than now I could write out this method just like the equal sign I could make a greater than method define it all but then I would need to do that for less than as well well there actually is a module defined for you that will define that has a method that if you define it will put in all those operators for you and I'll show it to you it's simply in the module comparable include comparable spelled with the uppercase C and what it asks you to do is define the hash rocket syntax and this hash rocket syntax says okay how are you going to enable comparisons for this object for the circle objects do you want to compare the radiuses and we could put maybe a boolean equation we could put and statements but since the radius is going to be a number that already has comparable written down for us. So we can simply say, hey, just use the same hash rocket, the you know comparison rocket arrows to compare your two numbers. And when we do that now, when I run this, I do not get that error. I get false. C1 is less than, is C1 greater than C2? No, C1 is less than C2. Its radius is less than. And when I switch this, I get true because C2 is greater than it. So with comparable and defining just one method, I have now gained six methods. I've gained the equal equals method, which we defined, but now we have back again, the does not equals method, greater than, less than, greater than or equal to, less than or equal to, all because I just defined this one hash rocket method. So the comparable module is really important and allows you to compare your classes and set how you want them to be compared because you could also add in syntax to maybe take into account maybe the area and, you know, and the, you know, area if we had to define is, you know, something other than the other dot area, just like you want it to. So you can use modules to abstract your code and put it all in one place and avoid a duplication. That's a big thing with code is to avoid duplication. That's it for this video. Hey guys, I just started a new course on Thinkific that I have created that takes you through all the basics of Ruby programming. If you want to check it out, I have the link in description. It's completely free and you can ask questions on it and I will respond and I will be updating it as much as possible and also be adding Ruby on Rails. Thank you guys. Please check it out.